Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining this uh, this morning. If you're in the uh, US, um, my name is James Polly. I'm a faculty member at the University of Maryland. And welcome to the in vitro release testing, in vitro permeation testing methods, best practices and scientific considerations for ANDA submissions. Uh, really pleased to be with you today and hopefully for the next uh, three days. A lot of people put a lot of effort into this uh, very detailed meeting with the with the goal of really helping you as participants to be able to put uh, best packages together for FDA approval. Okay, I'm gonna uh, share my screen now and just go to some slides. Okay, again, welcome to the meeting. Um, these are just some opening remarks to a very detailed three days. And in the lower right-hand corner, I think probably at some point you've been here, please visit the complexgenerics.org website. Okay, just have two things we'd like to cover with you over the next, say, 15 minutes before we get into the meat of the matter on IVRT, IVPT. So just some backgrounds about the Center for Research on Complex Generics, which is uh, co-hosting this event along with the FDA as well as some workshop logistics and features. For example, telling you that this is being recorded and will be available in, uh, in three weeks. Okay, so this new center uh, started right around a year ago on complex generics. I'm very happy to be uh, co-director of the center along with Anna Schwendemann, who's pictured here. Uh, Anna is at the University of Michigan. So this center is kind of an in innovative idea uh, funded by the FDA, conceived by the FDA, uh, as a way to help them um, accomplish things that they've long been conducting in terms of promoting generics, uh, gen uh, efforts to make generics. And uh, all, other, people, uh, other people involved in this at the University of Maryland, University of Michigan side, Arvisha, who I think many of you have corresponded with. Uh, here's our um, Subject generic email address. Jim, your the slides are not being shared. I'm just oh. starting to interrupt. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, sorry about that. Thanks, Markham. So I was just describing some of the people at the center, at the university side, uh, myself, Anna and Visha, and hopefully, you've, I think you've probably been to the website before. And again, I, I would just encourage you to sign up for our list. Sir, we do periodically send out emails telling, for example, about future workshops. Although this is our very first workshop. Okay. And the overall mission of the center is to increase access to safe and effective generic drugs through enhanced infrastructure communication, education, research collaboration across industry, academia, and the FDA. Uh, so there's three main elements uh, concerning this center. Uh, communications, for example, in the last year, we spent a lot of time discussing with industry what their perceived needs are with regard to um, developing and applications for complex generics. Uh, we certainly have a, uh, a education mission and uh, we're really just starting that up now. Uh, we were happy to contribute to the FDA's annual JADUFA day in June. And as you'll see, we have a couple of workshops that are planned in the immediate future. And also we've got some research projects off the ground. And so one theme we will always ask is, you know, what research do you think needs to be done? And again, this, this effort of this new center really just uh, adds to uh, FDA's um, portfolio of activities. In terms of training mission, we, admittingly, I think we're being COVID impacted. One thing we were very enthusiastic doing when we uh, were thinking about this uh, more than a year ago is hands-on laboratory demonstrations, but I must admit we don't have any plans for that right now. Uh, here at the University of Maryland, we um, we do look forward the next couple of weeks to having in-person classes for the first time in quite a while. And I think until we, we do that in, in the next couple of weeks, um, it's hard to really conceive having visitors on campus for, for these sorts of things. Uh, okay. So here we are, we're very excited to have our first uh, workshop over the next three days. Thank you for your participation. Uh, also, uh, in the not too distant future, later this uh, fall, we have 
another workshop on regulatory utility of mechanistic modeling to support alternative bioequivalence approaches. Uh, please sign up for that if that's a topic you're interested in. There's the website. And then um, later in the year, we have one on best practices for establishing the suitability of a model integrated approach to demonstrate the bioequivalence of long acting injectable products. Very challenging topic that um, really requires creativity of all of us to try to move that very important area of very important products uh, forward to make products more accessible. Very challenging topic so that requires a lot of creativity. Uh, we also wish to uh, engage in research, again, in the context of all the things that FDA has already been doing for quite some time. Um, we do seek, again, we're being COVID impacted, having visiting scientists program to, um, we do think we've, we've heard from the industry about, you know, some, some educational needs that might benefit FDA staff. So we look forward to being able to do that in person. When possible, likewise, have laboratory demonstrations for for everyone. And in terms of some research that's um, that we've already started, uh, this this the first one that's listed here on the right hand side is related to um, one of the upcoming workshops on best practices for establishing the suitability of a model integrated approach to demonstrate the by BE of long acting injectable products. Uh, so that was. Work, work is being done in two two laboratories and um, to, to come up with uh, novel approaches to, to um, facilitate that using uh, model integrated approaches. And then there's also two other laboratory based projects involving uh, mechanistic modeling uh, for oral absorption as well as liposome technology. We did recently complete a survey um, and we look forward to publishing that in the next month or so. Um, we did, we did uh, share this in fair detail about a month or two ago at the June FDA annual JADUFA event. And if you go to the Complex Generics website, you'll be able to uh, navigate towards our YouTube channel where you can see the entire presentation, but just a little bit, a uh, little bit about this survey on scientific challenges in developing and the development of complex generics. We asked sort of three key questions, which complex products need to merit the most focus. You can see the list there, complex injectables, formulations, nanomaterials, complex mixtures and peptides, drug device combination products, inhalation and nasal products, only acting injectables and implants, ophthalmic products, topical dermatologic drug products, and sort of other and then kind of related to that, which analytical technologies and what educational topic. <coughs> and just to give you sort of a top tier results uh, from, from that uh, very informative survey in terms of rank order, first, second, and third place, so to speak, with regard to these three questions on which products, which complex products, which analytical techniques, and which educational topics. Um, I'd say first place, so to speak, with the most votes, and the vast majority of, uh, of participants in the survey were generic industry scientists or complex injectables, formulations, and nanomaterials. Next was drug device combination products, and third was inhalation and nasal products. Um, if you look towards the right-hand side, educational topics sort of mirrored that. And then in third place, educational topic-wide was data analytics, including quantitative methods and modeling and simulation. With regard to analytical techniques, a the theme was um, was modeling, um, locally acting physiologic based pharmacokinetic modeling, oral absorption models and bioequivalence, and data analytics and machine learning. And again, a more uh, detailed presentation uh, was recorded and available through our YouTube channel at complexgenerics.org. Additionally, um, we spent the last several months speaking with uh, various uh, generic companies and related industries and asked them what, what are the barriers for complex generics? What are the pain points? Um, what are the scientific issues, regulatory challenges, market competition and then ROI considerations? And then how can the center help? Um, and we do look forward to uh, publishing this. We do think we actually captured
Sorry about that. Okay. So uh, that was uh, that was Anna. I had been. I guess I had not removed her audio that she uh, kindly provided during the June Judith meeting. Um, so this kind of gives you a scope of you know we, there was a range of companies, large specialty and trade organizations. Uh, admittingly, each of these companies has their own um their their own uh, specialty uh focus uh so we did our best to kind of do a coverage again that these uh these stakeholders have different products that they're interested in and uh based on their perspectives different uh issues were discussed uh they're really driven by them we're interested in knowing what their issues were so there are cmc issues be issues clinical design issues issues about use of modeling, product specific guidances, communications, and leachables and tractables seem to come up a, lo a lot, as well as the nitrosamine issue. Okay. And just kind of showing maybe some of the uh, dis discussions that we had met with and some of the topics that came up, uh, certainly a lot of CMC issues were brought up many times, virtually all the time, drug device combinations, variability of reference products, very specific bioequivalence issues, uh, changes in product specific guidances, um, communications, these were very frequent themes, as well as some very specific topics about leachables and extractables and nitrosamines. Okay. And Anna Schwendemann, who you briefly heard, Heard from there a couple of slides back. Uh, she did give a presentation at the June Tadufa meeting. And again, that's available in full on the Complex Generics uh, website. Um, just some some highlights from this slide that she presented that relate to this uh, this uh, meeting. This slide concerns topical products, and if you you know look at the uh, upper left, there's IVPT was was certainly a was a, was a topic about. You know, variability statistics hard to pass, low permeation rate, sample application, donor sample availability throughout study, no one no one size fits all practices. With regard to guidances, there was identified uh, folks indicate statistical guidance is for IVP, uh, doesn't discuss outliers. I think many of these things will be discussed at uh, at the upcoming uh, over the next coming three days. Okay. So that's a little bit about um, that's a little bit about uh, the center. Uh, appreciate your 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 time and interest in in this new endeavor. Just a little bit about the workshop. Uh, as you know, IVRT and IVPT are important methods used by the generic industry and others, and in, and in other contexts to support demonstration of bioequivalence and other assessments. Uh, the workshop purpose is is one one purpose is to explore challenging issues that would benefit from broader discussion as well as identify areas that would benefit from further research. Uh, the agenda is available on online. Speaker biographies are available online. Just uh, quickly going to that. Um, so there's some nice background. Hopefully you've already had a chance to peruse the agenda, uh, including um, topics that will be discussed throughout the three days, including the different types of uh, so we have these so-called talk show style and Q&A style um, discussions. A lot of effort by many people have gone into uh, making this happen to, to best um, hopefully address the questions that you have. Having said that, there is a chat feature in the lower right-hand corner of your panel. Uh, please, please feel free to make use of that so the panel can address questions that you have. Okay. And um, there are several, uh, for example, a theme of this morning is scientific and regulatory uses of IVPT. Uh, prior to that, there are some uh, more global uh, keynote and foundation lecture. Uh, and uh, so each, each morning and afternoon has a certain theme to it. Um, I will just say much thanks to the moderators. For example, this morning's moderator is Bo Mishniak Cohn. Well, I'll introduce in a moment. Also available on the website are biographies. Um, so moderators who have the challenge to introduce many people 
each morning and afternoon. We'll we'll be relying on this. Uh, you know, it's, it's it's fun to read these biographies. For example, I think we all know Ajay uh, uh, from Mercer University. But I have to admit, after knowing Ajay for many years, I, I did learn a couple of things about Ajay uh, that I'm very glad to learn. Okay. The other thing I would add is there's significant time built into the schedule, so please feel free to ask questions. Okay. With regard to some logistics and features, so it's a it's a lot of effort went into this by many people. It's a three day event, um, so you've successfully logged on for the first day. Uh, however, that URL will change each day, so each day is sort of a meeting unto itself because of uh, limitations about WebEx recording, which can only span 24 hours. Again, there's significant time for chat. Um, copies of all lecture slides as well as recordings will be placed onto the website within three weeks for all to view. And we, we will be putting out a post meeting survey probably about next Monday uh, after the weekend. And we, we're mostly going to want to know how did the workshop go with regard to advancing uh, your interest in future and the submission. Lastly, uh, special thanks to many people. Um, again, I would just just comment that a lot of effort has gone into this meeting by by many many people, and uh, really we really all do hope this is uh, will be worthwhile the next three days for you to really advance uh, uh, your interest in in uh, IVRT IVPT. Special thanks to Sam Rainey, who incidentally is also our uh, uh, Complex Center uh, FDA contact. Also, special thanks to Dr. Alder Stitchcomb, Dana, Visha, and Paige. I'll just say that Paige is a graduate student, so very competent in the area of topicals. Uh, she is looking for a job, but I think she's already got many interviews, so I won't say too much about <laughs> about her. Okay. All right. So thanks for your indulgence in terms of. Um, describing the center and also maybe a couple comments. It's my pleasure to introduce the moderator for the morning, Bo Mishniak Cohn. Again, I refer you to uh, the broader write up in the bios. Uh, Bo, I think many of you probably know, is a professor of pharmaceutical sciences at Rutgers University, long standing uh, active laboratory in the area. Uh, uh, Bo, uh, could you please introduce our first speaker?